In this video, I want to have a look at trapeziums and parallelograms. So we're going to have a look at all different types of quadrilaterals and their properties and how we can prove them. But in this video, specifically looking at these first two. So to start off with, a quadrilateral is just any four-sided polygon. So I've got here this sort of family tree of quadrilaterals. So we've just got your basic quadrilateral. Then if we go one step more specific, we've got a trapezium. So a trapezium is just a quadrilateral that has at least one pair of parallel sides. Then if we get more specific, we can have a parallelogram. Then we can have a rectangle or a rhombus and a square. And a kite is sort of off to the side here. So what this means is that if we look, for example, at a rhombus, a rhombus has all the properties of a parallelogram and a trapezium as well as some of its own. So technically any rhombus is also a parallelogram and a trapezium but a parallelogram or a trapezium isn't necessarily a rhombus. So you can read it that way. So for example, a square is technically everything else as well. It's just a special type of rectangle or a special type of rhombus, um, but none of the others would be squares. And a kite is off here on its own because it doesn't fall into any of the other categories. But like I said, today we're looking at these two. We're looking at trapeziums and parallelograms. So if we start with trapeziums, like I said before, a trapezium is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. That's the only property of a trapezium. And if we were asked to prove that a quadrilateral was a trapezium, that's the one thing that we would have to prove. We would have to show that it had one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram is a bit more complicated. So a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. So we've got this one is parallel to this one, and then this one here is parallel to this one. So the properties of a parallelogram, and you need to know these, are that our opposite sides are equal. So this side here is equal in length to this side, and this one here is equal to this one. So they're all the same length. Our opposite angles are equal. So that means that this angle here is equal to this angle, and this one is equal to this one. And it says our diagonals bisect each other. So the word bisect means cut in half. So that means where they cross over, they split each other in half. So this part is equal to this part, and this length here is equal to this length here. And the last one is that adjacent angles are supplementary. So adjacent angles would be this one and this one. So they are supplementary because they're in those parallel lines. So they add up to 180 degrees. So we have an example here that asks us to find the values of the pronumerals in this parallelogram down the bottom. So we can start off just with the sides. Um, there's four different things that we need to find. If we start off with x, we would know that x is equal to 8. And our reason for that is that they're opposite sides in a parallelogram. Our next side would be this y, which would be equal to 5 and our reason is exactly the same. So that's our sides done. If we then look at angles, we've got this alpha and beta up here. It doesn't matter which order we do them in. If we have a look at alpha first, we would know that alpha has to be equal to 40 because they're opposite angles of a parallelogram. And our last one, that beta, if we have a look at beta and the 40 there, because they're adjacent angles in that parallelogram, they must be supplementary. So beta would be 180 minus 40, which would give us 40. And your reason there is um, adjacent angles in a parallelogram, or you could just write supplementary, and we could give the um, in those parallel lines. So that's an example of how we can find values if we know that the shape is a parallelogram. But we also want to be able to prove that a shape's a parallelogram. So to prove whether a quadrilateral that we're given is a parallelogram, we need to prove one of those four things that are written there. So we can either prove that both pairs of opposite sides are equal, or we can prove that both pairs of opposite angles are equal, or we could prove that one pair of opposite sides is both equal and parallel, or we can prove that the diagonals bisect each other. So the information that you've given in the question is going to determine which one of those four things that you prove, but you don't need to prove all of them, just one of those four points. 
So in this example, we're asked to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. So straight off, you can see that that 12 centimetres is equal to this 12 centimetres over here. So those two sides are equal in length. And then we're given two angles. So we're given a 70 degrees and a 110. Now they're adjacent angles because they're next to each other and they do add up to 180, which means that our adjacent angles are, um, are supplementary. And that means that these two lines have to be parallel because these are our co-interior angles in those parallel lines. And co-interior angles are only supplementary if our lines are parallel. So to write that proof down, we're going to write AC is equal to BD, and that's just given. So that's our two 12 centimeter sides. And then we're going to write angle CAB plus angle ABD equals 180. Actually, sorry, we should put our working out in there. We should write equals 70 plus 110 equals 180. So because they're supplementary, we know that those two lines have to be parallel. So we can write AC is parallel to BD. And our reason is that those co-interior angles were supplementary. So because we've proved that the opposite sides are equal and parallel, we can write therefore ABCD is a parallelogram. Okay, so that's just the properties of trapeziums and parallelograms and how we can prove them.